Sigma Tiger News all up in your grill with the hottest, juiciest beef online. What do we got today? Teflon Don, toxic tampons, baby box drop off. <laughs> Welcome to Sigma Tiger News. And if you don't know what's going on, we had like the biggest news event of the year absolutely happened over the weekend. Let's go ahead and dive right in. What the heck happened? If you uh, want to really see something that said, uh, take a look at what happened. Iconic, absolutely iconic imagery happening right there. Well, boom, what do you know? MAGA, make America great again. It's time because America is the worst place on earth right now next to Canada. And that's a fact, okay? So what are we going to do here? How are we going to get over this? We elect Donald Trump as the next president of the United States because all the rhetoric coming out of the left is, oh, I wish he got hit. Too bad he didn't die. So, like, what kind of people are we dealing with here? What kind of humans get on with stuff like that? Anyway, we're rocking the MAGA hat until the election. Here we go. What's going on? So that's in the cleanest video. So, you know, what happened? What's the story? Boom. Thomas Matthew Crooks ID'd as the suspect who shot at Donald Trump at his PA rally. Crooks was 20 years old from Bethel Park, Pennsylvania, which was about 40 miles south of Butler Rally. An AR-15 was reportedly recovered at the scene. Crooks was apparently shot in the head after he tried taking out the former president. Here's an image of the individual uh, before and, of course, after. So, viewer discretion advice. Anyway, whatever. So, uh, we got this young kid who got an AR-15. Allegedly, his dad bought the uh, AR-15. We don't know. To be confirmed, Thomas Matthew Crooks was reportedly rejected from his school's rifle team because of his bad shot and his off-color jokes, according to the New York Post. Well, praise the Lord that he didn't have any extra practice. A former classmate uh, claimed that he tried out for the rifle team at Bethel Park High School. The school's range was 50 feet long and 21 feet wide. The Post says... He once shot from the seventh lane, which was closest to the right wall, and missed so bad he hit the left wall. He tried out and was such a comically bad shot that he was unable to make the team and left after the first day. Our old coach was a stickler. He trained Navy marksmen, so he knew people. He knew when someone's not the greatest person. We noticed a few things Thomas said and how he interacted with other people. He said some things that were kind of concerning. The video below is former classmate telling NBC. We don't need to hear it. All the info is there. There's an image of Thomas. I mean, some people have labeled him a dork, a nerd, whatever. I mean, like, he wears glasses, he's got a big head, he's probably smart, whatever. Not that smart, clearly. 
Trump shooter Thomas Crooks was bullied extensively at school. Classmates were potentially going to speak to reporters. Yeah, so potentially uh, it was like the things that he was saying. Let's just uh, have a dive in on exactly what's going on here. I want you to listen to a little bit of what he told us about what he knew about the suspect. He was bullied almost every day. In what way can you explain? Um, I mean, he would sit alone at lunch. I mean, he was just an outcast, and you know how kids are nowadays, so they're going to see someone like that, and they're going to target him because they think it's funny or whatever, so it's the best way I can describe it. And it's honestly kind of sad. Like, I don't want to say this is what provoked it, but you never know. Yeah. You said he was a loner? Yeah. Um, I want to say he was a loner more because he was just... He was quiet, but like he was just bullied. Like he was bullied so much, so much. It was high school. Yeah. What did they do? You remember at all what they said to him or called him? No. Um, he was just made fun of, I guess, for the way he dressed or his appearance. That's it, man. Bullying's bad. Like I was young, I was fat, I was bullied. I had classmates of mine, people I thought were my friends, like calling me names and stuff like that. It was devastating. It was horrible. Like, how do you react to stuff like that? Well, the last thing you want to do is grab a weapon and attack somebody. You know, you need to talk to somebody. If there's no one to talk to, what do you do? Where was his parents? His parents were behavioral therapists. Like, what does that mean? How come they couldn't help him? Where were they? All right, what else we got here? Trump confirms that a chunk of his ear is gone. Details more injuries he received during an interview with the New York Post. Trump says he was hit so hard by Secret Service who rushed to protect him that his shoes fell off. The former president said he wanted to keep speaking, but obviously he had to leave. The Post says a small chunk of Trump's ear is gone, which was protected by a white bandage during their interview. Trump also showed the Post a large bruise on his forearm that he got from hitting the ground. They took him out with one shot right between the eyes. They did a fantastic job. Trump said he would be attending the funeral of Corey uh, Comparatore, who lost his life at the rally. Yeah, he was a volunteer fire chief. Apparently a super awesome dad. His daughter said some amazing things to say about him. Uh, so we pray for his soul. We know he's upstairs with the big guy. And uh, he's looking down. He's super thankful that uh, Trump is alive. And he's going to lead us into the promised land. All right. Trump also praised the attendees at the rally for staying calm. I love them. They're such great people. Yeah, absolutely. Tragedy avoided. All right. So what's the deal? Who's behind the uh, Secret Service? Well, uh, the director, Kimberly Cheetle. Cheadle's Angels, coined that one yesterday, should resign. She has been focused on hiring women. Meanwhile, roofs were unguarded 130 yards from the president. What the heck's going on? So let's get an idea of what is going on here. Women recruit by 2030 and even allow YouTube influencer Michelle Carey to train with agents. But I'm very conscious uh, as, uh, as I sit in this chair now of making sure that we need to uh, attract diverse candidates and ensure that we are developing and giving opportunities to everybody in our workforce, um, and particularly women. That workforce will be pivotal for the 2024 campaign season. And boy, oh boy, did they do a great job covering Donald Trump. There's images of like the five foot five Secret Service female agent in front of him, and it looks like she's hiding. And uh, obviously Donald is a big dude, and a five foot five woman is not going to cover him. Which for the first time includes a former president who already has lifetime protection. So yeah, the one thing too about this lifetime protection that they have, uh, it's come out and said that like typically they'll get one sniper, maybe two, and that's what he had, but they were on the exact same roof. So what's the point of that? Anyway, a lot of unanswered questions here. Uh, so let's have a look in at uh, Kimberly Cheadle of Cheadle's Angels. She is the 27th director of the U.S. Secret Service, sworn in to the office September 17th, 2022. She is responsible for successfully executing the agency's integrated mission of protection and investigations by leading a diverse workforce composed of more than 7,800 special agents, uniformed division officers, technical law enforcement officers, and administrative professional and technical personnel. Prior to her appointment, Ms. Cheadle served as senior director in global security at PepsiCo. 
where she was responsible for directing and implementing security protocols for the company's facilities in North America. Her role at PepsiCo involved developing risk management assessment and risk mitigation for a uh, juicy fruit theft. Well, good Lord. Uh, yeah, I don't know if Juicy Fruit's owned by PepsiCo. Probably Wrigley. I don't know. Whatever. Uh, yeah, so here it is. We have the woman who's focused on diversity, not security. She feels that women need to be uh, more involved in the security of individuals. Sure, why not? Everyone deserves an opportunity, but apparently the threshold for women's fitness is a lot less than the threshold for men's fitness, which is like, you know, thought it was all equal. Anyway, let's look and see uh, what's going on. Absolute humiliation for this gaggle of female Secret Service agents. Look at the disorder. Can't holster weapons, gear falling to the ground, erratic, fearful movements, no show of force or composure. DEI Secret Service makes presidents less safe. Uh, DEI also uh, nicknamed didn't earn it instead of diversity, equity, and inclusion. Very funny. So let's go ahead and uh, have a quick look at this. I mean, it's worth a second watch, to be honest. Like, to see, we have this woman here in the front, we have another woman here, and then a woman in the back here helping the president into his vehicle. And if you notice this woman here, she, uh, on the left, she bungles with her uh, gun. The other woman is kind of like looking around, doesn't have a clue. And a woman in the back then adjusts her sunglasses. Just have a look at the left screen Good job with the pistol there, can't get it in. So what are you gonna do? Just gonna hold it there, look around. Perhaps you can holster it now, again. It just gets it in there, and boom. Secure, we did it guys, high five. Margaritas tonight. Anyway, what a joke, absolutely. Like I would be like so upset if that was my detail and I got shot because the they were covering the roof over here. Like what's going on? What's going on? Yeah, whatever. Anyway, Don Bangino uh, is a former special agent in the Secret Service and is very close to the Trump world. The Secret Service spokesman is disputing this assertion, but my reporting on the agency over a decade has shown me that there's often more to the story than even agency spokesmen know. So failed Secret Service Director Kim Cheadle must be asked in front of Congress and under oath, have you denied any Secret Service requests from supervisors on the Donald Trump protective detail? Because the, uh, the rumor is that they have. Trump asked for more detail and they denied it. Is it true? We don't know. We'll find out, potentially. If the answer is no, absolutely not telling the truth, resignation to start. So yeah, like if she denies it and uh, it turns out to be true, she should resign. She should resign right now. It was an absolute failure from the top down. The glaring Secret Service mistake was a problem assessing the line of sight. There should be more internal Secret Service paper trail on how many counter snipers, other officers and agents were allotted to this event in Pennsylvania. One source in the Secret Service community tells me, before the event, a Secret Service advance team walks the protectees, in this case, Trump's route, ingress, egress, and the site and stands on the stage and looks out 360 degrees to determine vulnerabilities, keeping in mind effective lethal handgun and rifle ranges and making sure those areas are posted and covered. In this case, they missed the rooftop 130 to 150 yards away. Even for a mediocre shooter, that's not a difficult shot. Many competitive shooters compete out to a thousand yards. How many counter sniper teams were there on the presidential protectors? Detail agents use as many as we need. If we could justify it, former presidents and other details are lucky if they get one and luckier if they get more than one. So it seems that he had two snipers there, but they were on the same roof. Why wasn't there one over there? And secret services do not advance, uh, whatever, blah, 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 blah. We would always be sure requests were in writing, so there's a paper trail. So that's the thing. Will the evidence get destroyed? What's going to happen here? Justin, new footage shows Sniper appearing to notice the suspect just milliseconds before the man shot at Trump. The sniper could be seen looking up in what appeared to be shock the moment the first bullet rang out. The suspect, who was on top of the structure, was then quickly neutralized. Let's have a look at this.
We'll get it. And you know, that's a little bit old, and that chart's a couple of months old, and if you uh, want to really see something that said, take a look what happened. And you know, that's a little bit old. All right, I mean, like, it's quick. Did it really happen? I don't know. It's tough to say. That one's a tough one. But anyway, something came out on Reddit. Check this out. Whether you believe it or not is yet to be confirmed. My name is Jonathan Willis. I am the officer in the infamous photo of the two snipers on the roof at Trump's rally. I came here to inform the public that I had the assassin in my sights for at least three minutes. But the head of the Secret Service refused to give the order to take out the perp. 100% the top brass prevented me from killing the assassin before he took the shot at President Trump. And there it is. Police Secret Service written on his back. Boom. But is that Justin Willis? And did Justin Willis really write this message? I didn't follow the orders, though. As soon as the shooter opened on Trump, I returned fire despite strict orders not to engage. I had eyes on the shooter for three minutes, watching him fiddle with the rifle and adjust the scope. It was obvious he was a shooter, yet I wasn't allowed to engage. After I killed the shooter, I was arrested, questioned by the FBI, and just released an hour ago. Already lost my job for not following orders, but I'm glad I took the shots anyway. So, uh, Richard M. Fleming, PhD, MD, JD, this should be easy to validate. Yeah, so we'll keep you posted on that. Whether, uh, what was his name? Justin Willis? Jonathan Willis. Actually come out and uh, admitted this. Unbelievable. Local officer tried to stop the gunman on the rooftop, but was unable to engage him, Butler County Sheriff says. Yeah, so uh, a guy with a MAGA uh, visor and fake red hair had come out and was like, Hey man, I was pointing at him. I went to the cops. I told them that there was a guy up there. Well, apparently they did engage. He climbed up the roof, peeked over. And that's when Crooks looks over, aims the gun at him. They were unable to engage. And immediately after that, that's when he took to firing at Trump. That's the story. And this is the information we have. All right. Well, what's going on in Canada? Look out. Boom. Western Standard. So this is a conservative-leaning uh, publication. Let's see what they got to say. Lieutenant Jenny Karengan. Nan, whatever. Anyway, uh, let's go ahead and dive right in. Good Lord. Okay, former President Trump's Secret Service protection was catastrophic failure. What is going on here? Why? Where's the story? Seriously, loading content. Right on. Gotta love it. Premium? Man, this wasn't premium early. Anyway, whatever. She was in charge of bringing all the DEI stuff, the woke... Uh, wait, what's it? It's got me all jacked up. Anyway, whatever. Let's get into the next one because it still talks about her, the dress code. That's what I'm talking about. Boom. All right. On Wednesday, June 5th, the Canadian Army Forces issued a directive that as of July 2nd, 2024, there will be a new stricter dress codes in effect for all serving members. For those who follow Canadian military affairs closely, this new direction is actually a sharp reversal of the co recent controversial policy change which announced in September 2022. At that junction, Chief of Defense Staff General Wayne Iyer and then Canadian Forces Chief Petty Officer First Class Gillies Gregoire had made a joint announcement repealing many of the military's traditional regulations and dress deport. Many of us have grown up with an ingrained view of what a traditional sailor, soldier, aviator must look like, and over the ages, uniformity has been a method used to instill discipline. But uniformity does not equal discipline or operational effectiveness any more than the color or length of the hair define your commitment or professional competency. Yeah, so uh, a bunch of bull talking about that. The truth is, is that uh, the public has a certain ideal of what... Uh, a police officer should look like or a doctor or a paramedic and when that starts to stray away from that it loses credibility and it loses support and nobody wants to join because the uh, recruitment numbers are like cratering well anyway they reverse that and obviously the reasons why all right well toxic tampons heads up if you're a female and you uh are going through menstruation Researchers have detected toxic metals like lead and arsenic in more than a dozen brands of tampons, according to a new study by the University of California, Berkeley. The study's lead author, Jenny A. Shearston, said in a statement that very little research has been done to measure chemicals in tampons. That's insane. And this study is believed to be the first of its kind. What? 
I mean, like, how long has this been around? Tampon's been around since I was a kid, so at least 40 years. First study. What? Anyway, so you talk about toxic shock syndrome. Like, there's been stories of women who forgot the tampon was in there, and it was in there for, like, 30 hours, and then they die. Well, maybe it has something to do with the heavy metal. It's, like, leaching into their bodies. I don't know. So, uh, published a journal, Environmental International Study, found measurable concentrations of 16 metals and 30 tampons across 14 brands. The widely accessible brands of tampons purchased in U U.S. retail chains and online from Greece and the United Kingdom. So, they did not name the tampon brands, though. What's their top brands? You're talking about Tampax, right? What else is there? I don't know. The following metals were assessed arsenic, barium, calcium, cadmium, cobalt, chromium, copper, iron, mercury, manganese, nickel, lead, selenium, strontium, vanadium and zinc toxic metals like cadmium lead and arsenic were found in higher concentrations while mercury and chromium showed up less notably there's no exposure levels to lead considered safe so although toxic metals are ubiquitous and are we are exposed to low levels at any given time our study clearly shows that metals are also present in menstrual products and that women might be at higher risk for exposure using these products yeah because it's literally like a, an open wound inside your vagina cavity you know what I mean? Like, it's way more easily absorbed into your body when there's moisture, right? You rub moisturizer on your skin, and like a half hour later, it's gone. It's not even greasy. Boom. What happened to it? Well, it absorbed into your skin. Our skin is porous. And inside the vagina cavity, all the tissue is definitely porous. The majority of 52 to 86% of people who menstruate use tampons. So, yeah, literally, like, stop. Figure something else out. Get a class action lawsuit because this is not looking good. Not looking good. So I would I would assume there's going to be a massive class action lawsuit against the uh, the feminine hygiene industry. So uh, we'll keep you posted on that so you can get up in that and sue, especially if you've had any cancers or deaths that may be related to heavy metal poisoning. Philly ejaculation attack. Come on, man. Seriously. Suspect identified turns himself in gross it's not going to lick itself what kind of shirt is that police just released gary a miles mugshot and the charges he's facing look at this individual philly pd says it's booked miles for indecent assault indecent exposure open lewdness and harassment looks like we have a blurred out image of the stained leg the philly man accused of masturbating on a woman's leg inside a dollar tree store has surrendered after cops and even rapper meek mill launched a manhunt for him cops confirmed 35 year old gary mills from southwest philly is now in custody after voluntarily surrendering to authorities wednesday evening a move that he made after the alleged victim posted video of him fleeing the store immediately after the incident the exact charges he's facing will be announced once they're filed yeah disgusting it's wrong Anyway, they said they seen him hanging around, lurking around the store. Weird dude. And then I guess he gets aroused somehow. And he's like, I'm going to take care of this. And he sees some loot misses his leg. And he just goes and just chafes one off on her. Gross. Sick individual. Transitioning teen arrested in Florida after faking home invasion, killing mom and mom's boyfriend. Yikes. There's an individual. Mother. Gosh. 16-year-old girl who had been transitioning to the opposite sex per police was arrested over the weekend in Palm Bay, Florida after allegedly killing her mother and her mother's boyfriend. Julia Egler was subsequently charged with two counts of premeditated first-degree murder for the deaths of Kelly McCollum and Matthew Sergenrock. Egler initially staged a home invasion in an attempt to convince police she was simply an innocent bystander to a grisly double homicide, but later came clean and admitted that she had killed them. The teen cited disagreements with her mother over her transition, claiming she was not very accepting. Yeah, she was probably devastated that her little girl was indoctrinated by the internet into accepting the fact that uh, she's something she's not and believes something that's absolutely insane. As WKMG reports, shortly after midnight on Sunday, police pulled up to an address on Benchler Road after Egler herself called 911 to report a home invasion. The teen told officers she had been in her room when a man broke in and attacked the pair. She proceeded to show evidence she planted. However, eventually investigators caught on and took her in for questioning. Yeah, they're just like, this doesn't add up. Your story is horrible. And what about this? And what about that? And she was like, oh, you know, she wouldn't affirm me. And now you don't have a mother and you're going to go to jail. Egler reportedly said she used a 38 caliber revolver that she stole from her mother's room to shoot her in Shejnarok. Uh, the former 
died instantly while the latter was still alive. After running out of bullets, Egler grabbed a chef's knife and stabbed him again before he asked her to reload the gun and shoot him dead. Unbelievable! So, dude, Shezhnorak was there dying of a gunshot wound, and she decided to stab him, and he was like, just reload and kill me. Unbelievable. Wow. According to WFTV at the station, she confessed that it was she who had committed the murders, noting that the attack was the culmination of many disagreements in the previous weeks. She told police that she was not happy with the fact that McCollum was not very accepting of her transition. She also didn't like McCollum was dating Sheshnerick, who was 22 years old. Egler was transported to a juvenile detention center where she remains a cousin. Boo-hoo! Little kid doesn't like what's happening, resorts to violence. Why? I wonder why. Maybe the same reason this 20-year-old dude tried to kill the former president. Because of the rhetoric that the left is pushing out. They must be eliminated. Put them in the crosshair. Bullseye. These people are threats to us. A threat to our survival. A threat to democracy. They're labeling conservatives, who are absolutely no threat whatsoever, as threats. Conservatives are usually Christians. Do no harm. Like, you know what I mean? These liberals don't believe in anything. They have zero foundation. Just gimme, 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 till I got it all. And then maybe I'll take what you got, too. Boom. Trans inmate serving life for killing parents goes on hunger strike to protest being removed from women's prisons for having sex with female inmate in Washington. Okay, well, yeah. Not supposed to be fraternizing. Picture of the individual. Washington State's prison officials removed Brian Kim, a trans-identifying male sentenced for murder from the women's prison and transferred Kim back to the men's prison after Kim was caught having sex with a female inmate. Kim went on a hunger strike to protest the move, and this marks the first time the agency was removed a transgender person from a gender-affirming housing. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. Is he a lesbian? With a penis? What's going on? Like, that's the, the lines are blurred. They're like literally just smeared. It's a mess. That's what it is. Good job, liberals. On March 14th, 35-year-old Brian Kim, who now goes by Amber Faye Fox Kim, was busted having sex with 25-year-old Cincere Marie Norton, the Washington Correction Center for Women. According to the spokesperson, Ryu was convicted in 2008 on two counts of aggravated first-degree murder and sentenced to life prison for fatally stabbing father Richard Kim and bludgeoning and strangling mother Terry Kim in their Mount Spokane home in 2006. Sounds a lot like the previous story. After the murders, Kim attempted to clean the crime scene and conceal the parents' bodies. The following day, Kim went shopping and used the father's debit card to withdraw $1,000. Busted. Stone-cold, dumb criminal. Kim was originally housed at the men's facility, but was transferred to women's facility. February 2020, under the State Department's Correction and Gender Inclusion Policy, which was approved by Washington's Democratic Governor, Jay Inslee. The policy allows male convicts to be admitted to the female facility if their gender dysphoria diagnosis is accepted by the administrative panel. So, am I a female? Well, let's ask. Uh, do you feel like one? Yes. Are you growing your hair out? Yes. Uh, do you want breasts? Yes. Uh, would you like to remove your penis? Yes. But not yet. Whatever. Anyway. Disgusting. Should not be allowed. I mean, like, when they catch people having relationships in a... I mean, whatever. The truth is, it's like, if it was consensual, it's whatever. If he's raping them, it's a problem. But they're not supposed to be fraternizing like that. You're not supposed to, I believe. But I don't know, man. Gay sex is crazy in jail. It's crazy. Only gay when I stay. Nearly all a and cell customers' call and text records exposed a massive breach. And it happened like two years ago. Okay, and they're just finding out about it now. So like 100 million people. I worked for Sprint before in the past, AT&T. Uh, so, you know, you have all their information. Social insurance number. Or social security number. Got everything. All of it was downloaded. Video text, picture text, text messages, all of it. It's on the dark web. And guess what? Here comes a massive lawsuit. So likely you're going to get a call from like Equifax or an email or something like that stating that your information was breached and you get a free subscription for one year to this service that like, you know, if someone tries to open up a bank account or a loan in your name, you'll get notified. And your credit will always be jacked up, likely. All right, what else? European Commission offered X an illegal secret deal if we quietly censored speech without telling anyone. They would not fine us. Hey, well, guess what? X said, kick rocks. 
X did not. In our view, at X doesn't comply with the DSA in key transparency areas. It misleads users, fails to provide adequate ad repository, and blocks access to data for researchers. It's the first time we issue preliminary findings under the Digital Service Act. Yeah, get out of here. We don't want it. We want freedom. And Safe Haven Baby Boxes founder Monica Kelsey speaks at Idaho's first baby box in Blackfoot. So what the heck is a baby box? Well, guess what? If you are uh, pro-life, you know, and you made a mistake and uh, got pregnant, but you don't feel like you can take care of the baby and you don't want to go through the whole adoption process or legal process, perhaps you've kept it a secret and you've gone into labor and now you're, you have a baby. Well, you can just drop it off in the box. I'm assuming you lift the box, it probably sends a message to the fire department or someone like that. And that's why it says, don't open it on, yeah, silent alarm will activate. Don't open it uh, unless you have a baby you're dropping off. Monica Kelsey, who created the first baby box seven years ago, shared her story at Tuesday's celebration of Idaho's first safe haven baby box located in the outside wall of Grove Creek Medical Center at 350N North Meridian sorry, Street in Blackfoot. The beginning of this growing movement was actually 52 years ago in 1972 a 17-year-old girl was raped and left to die. Kelsey said the teen not only lived but found the courage to press charges. As the rapist began his prison sentence, the girl began to realize that she was pregnant. Mm. Without any option for abortion, she again found the courage to have the baby. And in the spring of 1973, she abandoned her two-hour-old baby girl. The baby was later named Monica. Kelsey related to telling her own story. Today, Kelsey honors the courage of her birth mother and sees her as a hero. Wow! So it was her mother. Unbelievable. Thinking of what was best for both of them, 43 years old, Kelsey was married and working as a firefighter medic in a small town in Indiana. However, she retired to pursue her passion to bring help to moms and babies in similar situations as she and her mom experienced. Kelsey knew babies would be given up at fire stations, but she dreamed of a more private and anonymous way for this very difficult process. Awesome. Beautiful. So congratulations to her. She developed a way uh, that will protect and save babies. Sure, they're going to be in a box for like up to five minutes, but yeah, guess what? They're in cribs for five minutes too. So it's not a big deal for all these freak outs that are going to happen here. Blah, blah, blah. It's like if you pull up to a convenience store, okay, and you get out of the car and your child's in the back, it's a baby, right? Is it okay to lock the doors and verify that they're locked, you know, and then go in the store and buy your whatever you're buying and come back out? Is that okay? Many people would say absolutely not. What if the car's on with the AC? That's, you know, but the, the, the problem is, is that uh, what if something happens while you're in the store and the baby gets locked in? So the truth is, is that it is frowned upon. You shouldn't do it. I wouldn't advise it. But in extreme situations, if you do do it, it's not really a big deal. I mean, it's not like putting a baby in a pool and walking away, right? Anyway, so congratulations to everybody for tuning in today. And remember, it's MAGA country over here, baby. Let's see how many followers I lose. I got 255 right now. Let's see uh, how this goes down. We'll report in on Wednesday from MAGA Central. I know everyone hates MAGA, but whatever. Listen. Donald Trump's a man, and Joe Biden is not. And that's clear. Who else is going to choose? You're going to choose RFK? Maybe he would do a good job, too. I don't know. But right now, Trump's winning. He's leading. He's Teflon. Let's see how this goes. Make America great again, because right now, it is absolute garbage. Sigma Tiger, signing out.